Hello, everybody. Welcome back to your daily crypto news. Hope that you're all doing well and that you're all having a fantastic day. As always, leaving a comment, leaving a like, or subscribing. All of these things are very much appreciated as they do help out the channel. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. Welcome back for another really weird news day. It's kind of all over the place in many different directions, but I'm going to try my best. It says Bitcoin and Ethereum consolidate Zilliqa and ZRX. I have no idea what that coin is, Rally. We are once again at that point where... Uh, we have an avalanche of incredibly good cryptocurrency news over the course of basically forever and Bitcoin and Ethereum, for whatever reason, are continuing to trade sideways at the same exact time. As usual, there are a number of altcoins that are moving up while the rest of the market is relatively lull, if you will. It says Litecoin price analysis. Bulls target bullish move above 120 US dollars. Technical analysis. Ethereum could stage a strong rally if it clears this key resistance. The resistance for them is $3,150. It seems like a relatively easy resistance for us to pass. As right now, at the time of me making this video, Ethereum is at $3,088. And it seems like we can definitely, probably, get towards a, a $4,000 Ether as we have definitely done before. This one says, Bitcoin technicals suggest bulls are aiming at a sharp move above $42,000. You heard that right, boys and girls. Once again, um, analysts are incredibly optimistic, as I, I, I think everyone is relatively at this point. I excuse me if I am wrong. However, I feel it not only in the NFT space, but in the crypto space, also in kind of not the housing market per se, but I feel like this uh, this energy is kind of flying through the air once again. I have a lot of friends talking about they want to buy uh, additional investment properties this year. A lot of friends talking about buying land and metaverses and buying up huge amounts of NFTs. Me and my friend, hello, if you are listening and or watching uh, we we actually have a bit of a a, a dedicated uh, NFT buying, and that's going to be happening today. We're going to see if we can buy about fifty good NFTs. Uh, so anyway, the, the the point is the the energy seems to kind of be there back in the market, and a lot of analysts have continued to say over the course of the last couple of weeks that as long as we go above or stay above these levels or numbers that the market will kind of refix itself back up. And we are constantly close to these numbers. Bitcoin is 300 and something dollars away from $42,000. It doesn't seem like there's actually much stopping us from hitting those numbers. On top of that as well, the CEO of Celsius has announced that he believes that Bitcoin and Ethereum will be breaking their all-time highs this year. Uh, it's a rather long article. I don't have to read through the entire thing. He basically mentions that he thinks that the purchasing of Bitcoin by Terra is going to eventually have a very big impact on Bitcoin's price, as many other people have said before. Why it's not immediately having an effect that this one company wants to buy $10 billion worth of Bitcoin... I do not know. He talks about the movement of the dollar and how he can assumes it's going to continue to do very bad. He thinks that the moves that the Federal Reserve is making are also going to be very bad for the U.S. dollar in the future as the system is a bit um, used to being pumped full of dollars and doesn't really have another choice because we've seen before what happens when the Federal Reserve announced last year that they were going to stop buying, stop printing tons of money. The stock market nearly collapsed over the course of a couple of days because the market is used to this constant influx of money. He also announced that he thinks, or rather, I mean, this is just completely logical, uh, what Russia's doing, if that stops, all market should kind of breathe a, a sigh of relief. Uh, but alas, it does not look like that event is going to be ending anytime soon because it was also prominently this morning in the news 
as they um, relentlessly... Anyway, um, yeah, it says, analyst says Bitcoin has already capitulated, targeting $1,300 as the most hold level. This is another analyst that we've heard from another time, not the one that we heard from yesterday or the day before that, uh, who believes, and they all believe the same exact thing, that Bitcoin's price, that $30,000 was kind of the, the bottom, 30,000 was the bottom, 32,000 was a strong level of support, 37,000 kind of got us there. That's why the other day when we saw Bitcoin's price fall from 41,000 down to 37,900 or something like that, we promptly moved back on up to around a $40,000 Bitcoin. The general idea being that we are at the Bitcoin bottom. Prices have already collapsed. Everyone who wants to sell has already sold. A lot of other articles, I didn't, I didn't feel like having thousands of them up here. A lot of other articles were discussing uh, that it appears that the only people who are really holding Bitcoin at this point are either uh, people who have logically not sold, who have no intention of selling, or people who are buying up tons of Bitcoin. And this is going to kind of be one of the catalysts for the reason why the price actually moves back up, because a lot of the capitulation amongst um, newer people in the market kind of if you wanted to leave the market you've already left if 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 the last 6 months haven't shaken you off the tree well you are you are considered a long term holder or a uh diamond hand as the uh saying currently goes right now uh there's also articles popping up please don't do this we have so much time so many articles popping up about the the next bitcoin having it says halfway to the having i mean we have two years left. Please don't start this because this is, I, I mean, I know it's going to be this way, but uh, if you haven't been here before, uh, the lead up to the having is just as exciting as the actual having is itself in the cryptocurrency space. So on the two-year mark, we get a little bit of articles talking about that Bitcoin in another two years is going to be having once again, and then we start getting news about a year. I mean, like the actual year countdown is kind of the most ridiculous because every article discusses it in some sort of way. It's like Dogecoin went up by 29% today. Don't forget, Bitcoin's also having in 318 days, and it kind of ends up being that way. So I, I, I guess this begins the countdown or the race to the next Bitcoin having. I assume by that time we will have a $180,000, $222,000 Bitcoin. The halving will occur. People will go, I didn't see any fireworks outside. Bitcoin's price will drop. Everyone would be very confused. And then over the course of the next year, Bitcoin's price ends up skyrocketing because that's just how it has been for every other halving. Yeah. On top of that, uh, stock news was really all over the place today. I sometimes look for, is there any correlation to the stock market for cryptocurrency prices kind of news because we've been entangled with them for the last nine months or so. The most popular news being uh, that Netflix's stock dropped dramatically. And this had a, a bit of a slight cascade to the other uh, streaming platforms, slightly, and also to the other um, things that are considered tech stocks or things that have come out of Silicon Valley. And people were a little afraid that this runoff of Netflix would have a negative effect on the cryptocurrency market. See, a lot of you heard me say that and you were like, that makes no gosh darn sense. And it's because it doesn't and we should not be mixed up with the stock market in any way, shape or form. But alas... Yeah, there are like nine other streaming platforms now. There, there was a time where Netflix was like the only one. So it made sense that they had the entirety of the market share. However, when you have like 99 other platforms and some of them are even less expensive, let's be completely honest with ourselves, than Netflix and a lot of them have taken their shows off of Netflix and put it onto their own streaming platforms. Looking at you, Disney, uh, what was to be expected I think they said that they are expecting to lose uh, 2 million users just within like a three to four month period. So, you know, uh, not surprising at all. I mean, Netflix is okay. I mean, they're, they, I mean, they were never amazing, but, you know. Anyway, and then on top of that, to finish off the price news... It says European markets head for a higher open. Um, the current conflict remains in focus as it appears today. 
Um, Russia is in full swing for something that they've been trying to do, which they know that they should not be doing. Uh, and markets are a bit wary. However, it's a little weird that everyone has seemingly forgot that this uh, is actually taking place. And But I won't get too much into that because this is a cryptocurrency channel. Anyway, yeah. So um, I think if I am correct, I think Asian markets have uh, fallen uh, because allegedly, so I read a lot, Ali, uh, was that... Um, it appears as though there are new sanctions, and it looks like people are discussion d d d discussion discussing sanctions against China, as they appear to be very buddy buddy with another place that is causing a conflict right now, and they say that they only want their ties to get closer. Also, if you haven't seen what's happening. In China, um, 19 is back with a vengeance and people are there are not too happy. I'll let you look up that news uh, for yourself because it's a little bad. Um, so, yeah, that's all the price news. I told you even 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 the price news was was a little weird. Uh, so cool. Let's see what ends up happening. Uh, we are almost near the end of the week. I assume we're going to have a very lull weekend. I'm, I'm not expecting any hyper bullish movements over the course of the weekend. For those of you who missed the video yesterday, uh, we will, starting next week, have a uh, physical Bitcoin ETF in Australia that will, I assume, uh, be available to all Americans as well as it's being listed on the stock exchange in Chicago. And then Bitcoin's price actually fell by 2% when I was done with the video, so... You know, not much is really making sense right now. That's all the price news. And yeah, let's move on. In the second most popular news story of the day, one of the largest banking institutions in Germany has confirmed it applied for a local crypto license earlier this year, marking the first time a major bank has made a move towards cryptocurrency within the country. A spokesperson from Commerzbank confirmed to local media outlet Börsen Zeitung on the 14th of April that it applied to the crypto custody license in the first quarter of 2022. If approved, it would be authorized to offer crypto exchange services along with custody and protection of crypto assets. Commerce Bank serves over 18 million customers and 70,000 institutional clients, and the cryptocurrency offering would reportedly target rich people, as usual. Since the 1st of January 2022, any businesses wishing to offer cryptocurrency services in Germany must first seek approval from the Federal Financial Supervisory Authority, also known as BaFin. This was... Major news at the end of 2019. I was super hyped for it because the news that we got was that there were hundreds of banks uh, who were looking to get into the cryptocurrency space just within Germany alone. But alas, and this also, uh, I assume it was a mixture of 19 and also uh, this right here. It says currently only four companies have been approved. But Boffin has stated it has over 25 applications pending from firms wishing to operate crypto custody businesses. I am going to assume this is another um, bit license kind of situation. Uh, bit license being the license that people need in New York state and city if you wish to run a cryptocurrency anything. Uh, we had, I, I think the bit license came about in 2014, if I'm not mistaken. And I think some companies said that they had been waiting for six years to get approval for the license, and some of them were even rejected. It does not take six years to look at and sign paperwork. If you are that short on staff, please hire more people. I know there are a lot of people who would love to have not only a job, but a job reading paperwork and giving it a red stamp of Approval. So this is why I assume only four companies have been approved within Germany. 
Commerzbank is gigantic, as it said in the article. They are a very large institution. Uh, this is great. <laughs> How do I say this? It's it's. We don't really have a choice. The centralized authority banking institutions are here. It's not like we can ignore them. I was hopeful for a very long time that anything furtherly decentralized would have had a, a bit more of a, of a foothold in the cryptocurrency space. Alas, they have not. So a bank that is gigantic as Kamas Bank, who's also looking to get into crypto, logically speaking, they also would then have to buy cryptocurrencies themselves to be able to offer it to other people. Should be gigantically bullish news, but the market isn't reacting to anything that's being put out there uh, right now. So, yeah, this is uh, very big news. Here's the actual uh, news article discussing uh, the actual them trying to get the license. Yeah, relatively big news. Um, right. It's just weird. That we keep getting all this news and prices don't move. I know, I, I, and I, and I know, I know, I got it, I got it, I got it. I've said it like the last seven videos, like literally almost the exact same words. I get it, but it's weird. It's it's insanely, insanely odd that the market doesn't move on any kind of news. So you know, all righty, let's move on. In the most popular news story of the day. NASDAQ listed exchange Coinbase has launched a Web3 social marketplace for NFTs and it is in beta. In addition, the exchange noted that for a limited time, there will be no Coinbase transaction fees. There shouldn't be already. NASDAQ listed cryptocurrency exchange Coinbase announced on Wednesday that Coinbase NFT is officially live in beta. Coinbase NFT, they say, is a peer-to-peer -peer community platform where creators and collectors can come together to discover, display, purchase, and create digital assets, the company described. Coinbase first announced its plans to launch an NFT marketplace in October of last year. A lot of people were writing articles that they were upset with Coinbase, that Coinbase took so long to make this platform, and I was like, show me your platform. I don't even like Coinbase. So I'm, I'm, you know, look at me defending them. Like, can you show me your NFT platform? Can you show me the website that you made? No? All right, then stop complaining about everything. <clears throat> this apparently appears to be uh, like an Instagram, but not an Instagram. Wink. I don't know if they have a, 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 a photo here. No, it's not here. It was on another one of the articles. Uh, where basically, apparently, you'll be able to, of course, do it on their website, but also, I think, through an app as well. I don't know if it's going to be the Coinbase app or if Coinbase NFT is going to be its own app. And it looks like a social media platform where you kind of you can talk to people, you can hang out with people, can create NFTs and stuff like that. The official Twitter account for Coinbase NFT said, Today, we're kicking off with a full access experience for some of our waitlist ferns. Oh, friends. Oh, that's cringy. As we ramp up, everyone can explore the vast collection of NFTs on the first version of Coinbase NFT. And for a limited time, there will be no transaction fees. Coinbase also has extremely high fees just in general. I, I, I don't think it says anywhere what their fees are going to be. It does say that there are currently no fees. But in the future, they will be telling people when there will be um, NFTs. Hold on. Uh, Sanchen says, Sena, Coinbase's VP of products, this guy, Coinbase, in a blog published on Wednesday. He explained that starting Wednesday, anyone can explore the vast of NFTs. Beta testers can additionally create a Coinbase to buy and sell using any self custody wallet. Okay, what I want to know, and I mean, I assume this is going to be part of it. I want to know, you know, while you have your NFTs on their platform, can you take them off? That is a very important thing because many platforms are struggling with that right now. If you have an NFT, you should be able to move it anywhere that you want, regardless of if this is a centralized exchange or not. Um, so yeah, the really interesting part that I found that very few websites were actually talking about is that they plan on um, 
mainly at the moment using Ethereum, and at some point they're going to be adding other chains as well. It just seems completely logical. I assume the next chain is going to be Solana, because logic, everyone is obsessed with Solana right now. And then they're probably going to add um, mm, 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 Cardano at some point as well. And then I mean, if the stars align and Jupiter is in retrograde, I don't know if that can happen, or if the moon flips on its backside and does an ollie, they're probably at some point going to relist XRP, and XRP is also creating their own NFT marketplace. If Coinbase relists XRP and adds XRP uh, ledger NFTs to Coinbase, sign of the apocalypse. Like, look out because something is terribly wrong because Coinbase does not like uh, XRP at all. Um, but what I did find interesting is that, the, uh, of course, them using... Uh, Ethereum, and I assume Polygon, hopefully, for their NFTs means that at some point they're probably going to be integrating and or using Immutable X as well. So, uh, and VV is also on top of Immutable X, as is Hero. So, all, this, all, all the stars seem to be aligning in some sort of way uh, for the NFT space and like hyper integration. Coinbase is kind of, and I assume they launch this now. Maybe wanted to do it later on, but did it now, at least in beta, is because um, Instagram is expected to be launching it very, very soon as well. And that, I think, is going to really propel us, and I mean completely, skyrocket us into the actual mainstream uh, where everyone kind of has access to it. And when celebrities start talking about it more openly, because they're, they're doing it mainly now on, on Twitter, uh, but when everyone on Instagram is talking about it, then I think it's going to go... Uh, a lot crazier than it currently is. Yeah. That's the most popular news story of the day. Coinbase has launched their NFT marketplace. Uh, wonderful for them. I hope it works out. I, uh, here we go. He, here's kind of what it looks like. There was another photo of someone actually holding a phone, but I can't find that photo anywhere. It doesn't matter. Yeah. So, like, it looks like... Let's be honest with ourselves. This looks like Instagram. Uh, it looks like this, and this is what the web platform looks like. So we'll see what happens. That's the Coinbase news. And yeah, let's move on. Besides that, all the news was relatively random. Like, that was all the actual news. All the, all the other news, I mean, hundreds of articles uh, talking about where Solana's price might go. How high is Bitcoin going to go? That guy from, what do you call it, from uh, BitMEX, whatever his name is, the old crypto exchange from many moons ago, um, he announced recently that he thinks that uh, Bitcoin is going way downer before it actually ends up going upper. And he's like, oh, expect more downside in price. And that was also major news as well because he's a prominent figure in the cryptocurrency space. But him and many other people have been extremely wrong before. Don't ever forget this. Do not ever forget, you must remember, remember the good times where we were sitting here discussing, remember all these analysts and I used to, I, I wasn't making fun of them, but I was, I was having a laugh where basically they were always talking about Bitcoins going back down to a thousand. You guys got to expect a $500 Bitcoin. And I was like, who's, who's telling them that? Where, 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 where are you getting this information from that Bitcoin is going to completely collapse? Because you said that Bitcoin has to collapse because you want to buy more Bitcoin. And thank goodness, I hope that a lot of you listened all those years ago. Because Bitcoin never fell down to 500. Bitcoin never even fell back down to 1,000. We were, we were at the beginning of 2022 and the world was completely collapsing around us. All these people keep putting out these really weird price predictions. They never end up happening. And then prices end up going back up. And so many other people sold because they heard these special people talking about price collapses. Anyway, on the screen it says, luxury goods giant LVMH is eyeing the metaverse very carefully. Uh, so the news basically, I mean, sure, why not? We know that they are. I don't think they have to lie to any of us. Uh, the people from Louis Vuitton and the, rather, the the CEO, head honcho, his name is Arno. Uh, anyway, uh, anyway, um, he basically announced that they're looking at the metaverse very carefully. A lot of his other companies that are under his company's umbrella are or have already entered the metaverse space, have already created their NFTs. I think Louis Vuitton also has 
NFTs as well. I think they have a game you can play to get NFTs. I don't even know what I'm talking about. Um, and the news basically being that we had a, ye a year ago at this point, the, 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 the luxury clothing industry is desperately trying to find new ways to make money or to try and be young, cool, and hip. So they're trying to enter the metaverses as well. Uh, we had a couple of clothing brands who've already done so with the Sandbox and some towards Decentraland where they're creating clothing. So as you walk on the moon with cats playing behind you in the metaverse, I, I don't know, uh, you'll be able to wear some funky, fresh designer clothing. And I mean, I don't know the prices of these things, but heaven help us if anyone in the metaverse is wearing a, a $3,000 uh, sneaker or a $2,500 uh, pair of shorts from one of these places because it's digital. I, anyway, uh, yeah, told you weird news. That's the uh, LVMH news. And then on top of that, this was like slightly popular, but sometimes a lot of articles discussing what countries are doing tends to always be a little popular. Argentina is edging towards crypto regulation as well as further adoption with a new innovation hub that will allow regulators investors and crypto startups to work together it's basically a sandbox we had the first idea of a sandbox in 2017 2018 where regulators really realized what the word decentralized meant and decentralized or being decentralized had a more a uh, bit more of a stronghold on the cryptocurrency space it was more of a mantra and the entire idea was countries already didn't like us. Banks said they didn't like us, even though they were buying up cryptocurrencies. Uh, but basically, countries created a, a, a sandbox, which was basically a three block by three block area for some of them, where if you wanted to do anything crypto, it had to be within that area. And periodically, you would have someone walking through to see what you're doing, how it's going, and it's all, I'm tired of using the word cringy, but it's very like 1920s kind of, you know, someone walking down an aisle with their hands behind their back going, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, all right, mm-hmm, and it's, a, a, a lot of the countries who have even announced that they have a sandbox, no one just simply goes to those countries, i.e., why would I ever want to start a business or do business with or go to a country that anything that I did crypto-wise would be scrutinized. Why would I want to simply work in a in a in an innovation hub when I can just go to Switzerland and just kind of walk around and do whatever I want and start a crypto business from any corner of the country that I can? Or go to Portugal, or go to Puerto Rico, or many other places out there in the world that have actual lax cryptocurrency. A lot of it has to do with, and governments will never admit this, but you have to understand that it has to do with the actual idea of capital controls. Countries understand that their currencies are garbage. That's not me saying that like, revolution. No, it's really, they know that their economies are very, very bad. After years of corruption and tons of money laundering by the governments themselves, they know that things aren't correct. If people figure out all these things and eventually find out, hey, I can move to another new system, they're going to do so. We've seen this already in many other countries around the world that have increased cryptocurrency adoption. They don't have it as legal tender, but it's more of a, when you watch interviews with people in these countries, they basically say, we're, we're, we're tired of the fluctuations. We're tired of our, you know, waking up and we've lost 20% of the value and I have to have an entire uh, pillowcase worth of money to be able to buy a bag of flour. It's not a nice thing. So the idea is from the government side is that if you can have an area where these people are doing their business, but you can purview and look over everything that they're doing, well, then that's good for the government. But no one wants to do business in your country if you do that. It's, it's just completely logical. Like I'm sure that they, I'm sure that there are going to be companies in Argentina who are, you know, may not have the money to move. So they will definitely play ball within the country. But no one from Dubai or any other place is going to be like, oh, snaps. Did you see this innovation hub in Argentina? Bro, we got to go there. We got to be locked down in a three by three block area so we can't do anything without government scrutiny. That sounds amazing. It's ridiculous. So cool. Um, I prefer a sandbox as, as opposed to a, a complete cryptocurrency ban, if you will, on the industry or people being able to use cryptocurrencies, but a lot of the trends have simply been that governments are only allowing 
uh, companies who have enough money to be able to even pay for these licenses. This was also a very big thing a couple of years ago where multiple countries had a sandbox and you had to pay the, the equivalent of $35,000 to fill out the paperwork and hope that you were approved. That's very restrictive for anyone who's new trying to get into the space. They're only allowing uh, uh, cryptocurrency funds or ETFs and things like that, a lot of them for people who are rich. You have to show us that you have more than half a million dollars in your bank account. It's all these really weird things because they know where this is going. They know exactly where this is going. And the other really weird, sinister part is these governments are also accumulating cryptocurrencies for themselves and making sure that none of their citizens actually have it because who holds all the power? The people who hold the money. And so many people in the cryptocurrency space don't understand that. So... That's the Argentina news. Wow, got a little bit off track there. Fantastic. Um, yeah. Let's move on. As always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters. LRU, Michelle, and Creole. Lionel with Crypto On. Macho Nisa, Tigera. Keka Mibeka. Staff Corner Monks Fitness Anytime. Or, or Time Any, excuse me. Face Boat McBody, still funny even backwards. Crypto TS, <laughs> Crypto TS, Coins Minting, Fox Jeremy, Gardner Jim, Lavori Mangianik, Suk Sukap, that's Paxis backwards, I I I Rich Richie, that sounds like a rapper, Setsuna, D3 Coldy Artist Crypto, WorkNet Roll Bank, World the t to the 242, Owl Knight Wise, Sick Gray Adam, I'm sorry, Mollus Todd, Phobia Abiblio, Reader Animal The, Sun Sar John, Omotrosnomoto, Omot, Omo, Omor, Omortnos, Omortnos, that's Nostromo backwards. <laughs> what? Steuer Martin, PRX High Man Moon, 965 Utopia. Williams Navarro, Noster Patter, Miracle in Need, K Space, Good All Troy, Bidded, Biddy Quoty, Bid, Biddy Quoted, Silva DeLauren, Grole Miguel, One Two Nerd BV, Barazi Mo, Layway Z, The And Something Captain, Den Dealers The, Ski Bro Am Tony, Dave Arachno, Ben Coin Bit, Gable Roman, Wiser Fud, Queen Pyre Am, Am, On Let's, wait, On Move Let's And, Simplified Chain Block, Saad Jamie, Chain Block and Agile, Auspicious, Austin Life House, Mode Bubble, and Wally UBG. <laughs> Hold on, wait. I'm gonna give you guys a golf clap. If any, if any of you, if any of you are still here, <laughs> and you listen to me butcher all of that, you are a, you are a true, you are a true friend. I'll tell you that much right now. I was sitting here. I was like, if anyone's still listening to me, I mean, I I I I tip my digital hat to thee because there's nothing better. So <laughs> some of those are really funny backwards. At the moment, <laughs> oh wait, yes, thank you very much, all of you Patreon supporters, thank you for letting me read your names out backwards. <laughs> at the moment, Bitcoin is at $41,634, it is up by 0.69% and is up on a 7-day basis by 0.87, wowee, that's incredible, I can't believe those numbers, in the last 7 days, we've had non-stop Bitcoin good news, and I mean non-stop, and we are only up by 0.87%. Does does the moon have to accept Bitcoin as as payment? And I, and I oh, I can feel it. I, I know it's going to be something musky. I, I know it's going to be him who's going to propel the price forward because everyone keeps kissing his toenails, and I don't know why. Everything else is like sideways. Sideways red? A polka dot is up by 0.61%. Shiba Inu's down, near protocols down, down. Anything else green? Una said Leo Leo, that's a weird name, is up by 1.6%. Monero is up by 4.9. 
It is up by 15% in the last seven days based off of the news alone that people were taking it off of cryptocurrency exchanges. Don't they also have a hard fork or something coming? I, I don't I don't, I don't, don't really know anymore. ApeCoin is up by 13%, 14% if you round up in the last seven days. Spectacular. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, it was, I think, $17 or $18 yesterday and the price went down a bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, keep going down. Keep going down. I need to... Need to buy some. Um, ba -da -ba -ba -da. Theta is up by five percentile points. EOS is up by eight percent. It is up by twenty percent over the last seven days. I assume this has to do with the rebranding. I can only assumption. I would love if something else happens with EOS. You know, give us, give us something. Pancake Swap is up by seven. Po oh, pancakes sound really good. I'm super hungry. 7.5% up by 13% in the last seven days. And Zcash is also pumping itself back up as well as up by 4%. I assume this movement upward has to do with a lot of the is Dash here. I think a lot of the privacy coins are trying to make a comeback and say, ooh, where's Dash? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. What's happening? Oh, boy. Oh, ooh, ooh. Dash is number 80. Ugh. Um, that was embarrassing. Um, yeah, I think a lot of the privacy coins are trying to make a bit of a comeback as we see this reemergence of uh, people actually caring about decentralization in this space. Um, I do hope that you've all enjoyed. I do hope that you all are having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope that it is absolutely Fantastic. Has anyone else out there but just been buying a lot of stuff recently? I'm really have to have a talk with my bank account. I, I think I bought oh gosh, like 47 NFTs yesterday. And then I bought a whole bunch of physical art. Like I think I got like 16 pieces in the last like 10 days or something like that. And I ordered a whole bunch more. And, you know, it's gotten really bad where I even have stuff, like, in my shopping cart on another website. And, I, and I'm and i waiting to click buy because I'm like, well, if I wait, like, you know, like, seven days and then click buy, there's, like, a seven-day gap between me spending the old money and the new money. But, I mean, it, it's also, like, $5,000, so maybe, maybe I should, maybe I should wait. I, I, li I like buying stuff. I do hope you all enjoyed. Hope you all are having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever, <laughs> wherever you might be. I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting, or just being your awesome self. And I will most certainly I'll be talking to you all soon. See you.